our youth suicide crisis is five to seven times the national average. And that's not acceptable in 2017. And there has to be a national youth suicide prevention strategy put in place. But coming from the communities themselves, the families themselves, uh, there has to be greater supports there, no question. How do you bring about hope and inspiration to our young people? You know, it's uh, how do you provide a brighter future? It, it stems to a whole range of things. Uh, getting better housing in place, you know, access to potable water, better educational systems, better mental health supports, trans better transportation systems in and out of the north, um, having safe homes, having safe families where there's no abuse. And awareness of the first two steps that lead to understanding, that lead to action. And we have federal budgets coming up, we have provincial budgets coming up. You know, it's a way to help educate both the decision makers at all levels that you got to make this a priority. And uh, so that's why it was was picked. You know, it was is done that way, and it it just worked out great that I'm in my home area, and we have a lot of spiritual people in Treaty Four territory. We're going to ask them to 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 raise their pipes and pray for our young ones to give them that strength. We still feel the intergenerational effects of the residential schools and the intergenerational effects of the Indian Act, and we have dysfunctional individuals, dysfunctional families because of that. And you're quite correct. You know, rather than point fingers out like this, point it at yourself. And if you're healthy as an individual, you should have healthy families. Healthy families will breed healthy communities, healthy nations. So it does begin inside. But you have to have the necessary support to have the balance. You know, we, we walk in both worlds as Indigenous peoples.